Hey up everyone, how you all doing? Um, we're going to be doing something a little bit different today. Uh, we're going to be making a simple sugar wash. Um, so for those of you that aren't necessarily familiar with what that is, um, it's basically just going to be um, a simple sugar wash is basically what, once it's fermented out, you can put into something like, I don't know, like the T500 still, or maybe the Earth still. Um, and what you're going to get out of that is basically kind of pure alcohol um, and once you kind of temper that down or water that down to like let's say 40 percent you can then add flavorings to it um, so what you get in is a, a, a neutral spirit basically um, and it starts with a, a simple sugar wash so i don't know if you need to do a disclaimer uh, but obviously distilling um, spirits in depends what country you're from uh, but it's illegal in, in most countries unfortunately uh, unless you have a license uh, so based in the uk here um, i think it's oh i forget i think it's public notice something like 39 uh, but if you go on hmrc's website you'll you'll find um you, you'll find all about it um, so even kind of distilling for your own personal use is, is against the law because it needs to be taxed uh, whole brew of beer and wine isn't taxed uh, but, but spirits is uh, so go on HMRC and have a look uh, it'll tell you all about it and how to apply for a distiller's license um, in other countries obviously like the US it's illegal uh, places like New Zealand it's not um, you can check bastards if you're watching um, so anyway I'm going to show you how to do it uh, and if you're in a position to you know to, to kind of copy this then we're on to a winner uh, so it's super super simple Hence why it's called a simple sugar wash. So in here I've got, uh, it's a sterilised bucket already, but I've just put two litres, thereabouts, of, of boiling hot water in. Uh, and what I'm going to be using is literally just six bags of table sugar. Um, so six one kilogram bags, so six kilos all together. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get them in there and stir it in, so bear with me. So I'll put about three in and give it a good stir and we'll, uh, we'll add a bit more water, a bit more sugar. Get rid of all the kind of lumps and most of the bitterness in this first bit. Okay, so you get the idea. I'm going to carry on stirring that for a few minutes and then I'm going to get the rest of the boiling hot water in. And the other three kilograms of sugar and I'll come back in a second Okay, <clears throat> so I've brought that up to 25 litres. So I've used about, you know, three litres of boiling hot water uh, with the sugar, six kilograms of sugar, and just topped it up with tap water to 25 litres. Um, so starting temperatures around kind of, you know, room temperature, so 21, 22, and that's absolutely fine. So <clears throat> in terms of the sugar, um, I mean, if you're using like a, T500 still, something like that. Um, some people say you can use brewing sugar uh, and it improves the quality of the distillate. Personally, I don't think the money's worth it. Um, I, I've, I've done both and 
kind of be damned if I could tell any difference. So entirely up to you, experiment yourself. If you've got more refined taste buds than me, then you might be able to tell a difference. But for me, uh, you know, you're talking like 45p for a kilogram of sugar. Um, and obviously the cost of brewing sugar is a lot more, so it's not worth it at all. Um, and especially if you're using like the top end yeast as well, so this is still spirits yeast, uh, so the uh, the pure turbo um, yeast, and you can see the kind of distillate quality in the top corner is, is five stars, and it really is superb, it, it's absolutely amazing. So if you're thinking of like, comparing what comes out of this at the end to like a cheap bottle of vodka then this is like 100 times better it, it's, it's not even a competition um, and yeah this, so this is going to like take seven days to ferment out what we're going to put with it is some turbo carbon um, and what that's going to do it's going to go in here with the yeast and it's going to take out any kind of um, you know undesirable like impurities that are formed you know during the kind of fermentation process um, watch what you're doing with this stuff because it stains like a bitch and it goes everywhere <laughs> uh, so when you get this this is literally just um, like activated carbon powder with a bit of like uh, I assume water it's like a solution like a carbon solution um, but like if it's just been sat there uh, all the kind of particles will stick together so before you use it just give it a good squeeze and get in all the corners um, you'll be able to you'll be able to feel lumps so just get rid of all the lumps and make sure it kind of turns back to like a like a proper solution and not like a lumpy mess <laughs> uh, okay that's all right so yeah, 25 liters like i said just be careful so i'm probably probably going to spill this everywhere but and I'll try not to. I mean, so pour it in like really low down because if it drops in, it'll just splash out. Just give that a good squeeze and get it all out of there. So it's like a pitch. Right. So I'm just going to give that another stir as well, just to kind of get all the carbon mixed in. And don't worry, we're gonna use turbo clear. So some findings uh, once the fermentation process is finished. Um, and it literally will take all of these carbon particles all the way down to the bottom. Um, so that what you're siphoning into your still is just crystal clear. So whilst I was topping that up uh, to 25 litres, I was just giving it a good stir just to oxygenate the solution. Um, so obviously yeast needs a lot of oxygen um, to, to, to perform well. Um, so that's what I've already done. So this is already pretty well oxygenated. Uh, so all I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna stick this in. That's just a pack of yeast and yeast nutrient, but obviously it's um, high alcohol tolerant. So what you should end up with here, it's going to be around, after about a week or so, um, it's going to be around 13, 14%, and obviously then when you distill it, what you get out to the end, is going to be way, way up there. <clears throat> so I'll just give this a good stir, give it a mix in, make sure there's more yeast clumps and yeast nutrient clumps. In the next kind of 12, 24 hours, it should go off like a rocket.
And in terms of like <clears throat> the different yeasts and stuff that you can get, still spirits do a really good range. Now I always stick with that pure because uh, it's, it's, you know it gives you the best uh, the best quality distillate in the end. Um, but depending on your situation, your circumstances, and what conditions you you know you fermented in, uh, they do do like another a few different types of yeast. Um, <laughs> They even do one, I can't remember what it's called, uh, but it, it, um, it'll ferment this in like 24 hours or 48 hours, which is insane. Um, and you can get one that's really high temperature tolerance, so if, you, if you're going to ferment in like really high temperatures, then that's probably the one for you. Um, but you know, if your room temperature is just like 20, then you stick with that one. Let's see there. Lovely black. All right. And that, folks, is it. So, like I said, I'm going to stick an airlock in there now and I'm going to leave it for a week and then I'll be back um, probably in a different video and I'll show you how to set up the T5 and distill. Uh, and how to use it and how to distill with it. So, um, like I said, you know, if you've enjoyed the video, subscribe, like, and uh, come back soon uh, for some more videos. Alright, till next time, I'll see you there.